All right, so <clears throat> when we're dealing with factoring trinomials, um, one of the big uh, key tools that we use uh, in my classroom is this idea of an X factor chart. And the way that it's used is we need to find the factors of C, or my constant, uh, that, mul that multiply to give me my constant, but add or subtract to give me uh, my B, or my middle coefficient in my trinomial. So anyway, this is just an exercise uh, to help you guys understand uh, how the x-factor chart works. So for example, let's say on the first uh, one here on the left, 8 and 6 are on it. Like let's, if I give you the example question, x squared plus 6x plus 8. So where the 8 comes from is I have an invisible 1 in front of x squared, and when I multiply the 1 times the 8, so a times c, that's what goes on the top here, a times c, 8. Now the number that goes on the bottom is the number that's b, or the middle coefficient, which is positive 6. So that's where that goes. All right, so that's how we get those numbers there, and you'll learn how to do that. But now, here's how the x-factor chart works. I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me positive 8 and add to give me 6. Two numbers that multiply to give me 8 and add to give me 6. So where you start is by finding the factors of 8. So all the numbers that go evenly into 8. So 1, 2, 4, and 8. So we have to pick two of those numbers that multiply to give me 8, but add to give me 6. So if I chose 8 and 1, 8 times 1 does equal 8. But 8 plus 1 does not equal 6. So that is not, those don't work. 8 and 1 don't work for us. So let's go and erase that. All right, now let's pick a different pair. So 2 and 4. So 2 times 4 does equal 8, and 2 plus 4 equals 6. So the two numbers that work for me are 2 and 4. Okay? This is a crucial first step in how to solve, uh, how to factor trinomials by grouping. And so just wanted to get you used to this so that you see it, and so when I explain it later, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So let's try another example here. Again, let's say I gave you the example question 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. So how do we get that negative 10 on the top? We take 2 times negative 5, and 2 times negative 5 equals negative 10. So that's where that number comes from. The negative 9 on the bottom comes from the coefficient in the middle, negative 9. So that's where that number comes from. All right, now, let's find the factors of 10. It doesn't matter that it's negative. We can just find the factors of positive or negative. So two, 1, 2, 5, and 10. And I've already chosen that, again, negative 10 times positive 1 will give me negative 10, right? Negative 10 times positive 1 is negative 10. And negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. So you use a different combination of positives and negatives to get you the result you want. It doesn't have to be with a particular number. You just use it to make sure it makes sense. All right, here's my last one. So now that you understand how to get those numbers on the top and the bottom, I won't have to explain it again. Let's just go ahead and figure out the chart here. So factors of 12 are... 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So what two numbers together multiply to give me negative 12 and add to give me 1? 4 and 3, I think that will work, but which one needs to be negative? 3 needs to be negative because 4 minus 3 would be positive 1. So let's try that. So 4 and negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is positive, or negative 12, excuse me. And 4 plus a negative 3 is positive 1. So 4 and negative 3 are my choices. So this x-factor chart will be something that we'll be using when we factor uh, quadratics, and that will be happening in the next video.